Hey everybody, this is Lon Winters with Graphic Elephants, and I'm here with our head art elephant, Corey Gray. How are you, Corey? I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Hey, uh, we're going to do some lessons in Photoshop today. We'll start with handling and setting type in Photoshop. Uh, down the line, we'll do some additional layer effects, and we'll even do some separations. Corey, you want to share your screen with us? So basically, when you start almost any Photoshop file, you have a, a background uh, layer immediately. Um, because we're going to set type here, um, if you're not familiar with the type tool in, in Photoshop, um, I'm gonna, it's over here in your toolbox, it's the big T, but you can click anywhere in your file. And the minute you do, it's going to create a new layer. And it's, basically, it's going to be a text layer. Um, and it's called layer one. You can certainly go up here and you can change it to whatever you want. Um, seeing the lorem ipsum here, whenever you, whenever you actually uh, go to make a, a, a new text, um, this is a default word that comes up just so it can preview the font that you're that happens to be defaulted in Photoshop, whether that was the last one you used or or it actually the system default. In this case, um, we're going to use Aachen. It's a very bold type and it's great for this exercise. Um, so that's why you're seeing it Laurel Imsen in that particular font. But we're not going to use that. We're actually going to type in something that's legible. <laughs> in this case, it's going to be graphic elephants. Good choice. <laughs> Real quick to change any color in, in text in Photoshop, you literally have to um, select the type. So using your cursor arrow, just go ahead and just click over and drag so that you have all of the text selected. And then down here in your color palette, it's already red. So I just click on that once and say, okay, notice how it turned green. That's because you're seeing the negative. Whenever you select any type in Photoshop or even Illustrator, it does a negative of the color, so you can kind of see um, that the, the image or the font is still there. The minute you click off of this, um, you're going to see your color. You'll notice here, too, that it's stacked and it's centered. Um, uh, and you can change it to your justification quite easily. If you go along the top here, your top, your tools, while you're in this particular layer, you'll see your justifications for justified left, justified right, or your center and so there's what we're using. In order for me to do anything to this text or this font, um, you're gonna wanna have to always select it. So if we're gonna change the spacing in between words or change the spacing in between letters, you're gonna have to have your, your type tool selected almost at any point. Right up here at the top of your menu, this little folder here, it's your character uh, dialog box. Now, in the minute you hit it, it's gonna pop up the character box and the paragraph box. So I just get rid of my paragraph uh, dialog box. Another way to access the character dialog box is also under a window. Um, almost anything that you want to change in any particular layer, you will find all your dialog boxes here. That being said, um, so this is similar to Illustrator. It also has a character box as well. This way you can pick the type that you want, whether for whatever face you want, um, if it has options of bold, italic, you know, um, things of that nature. And then right below that, you have um, your uh, your size of your type. So I have it 100 point right now, but if you want to go smaller, these are your increments here, or you can type it in directly. Um, over here, we have, this is the letting options here. Letting is the space in between your words. Um, and, and if you're getting, uh, we have a hundred point type. So notice my letting is 110, because if I make this too, if the letting is much less than your actual font size, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, this is how it's going to appear. They're gonna overlap each other and you really don't wanna do that. The next thing that's important is the spacing in between letters. Um, I think this is fairly good, but like notice here, the E and the L are pretty closely spaced together but um, some of the other letters have more openings, like a P or the A, because of the, of the size and the type, and the fact it's not a full block. So if you want to make those changes, uh, there's a little more space in between the E and the L notice right here. Um, for whatever reason, if you didn't like that, um, or if you want more space in between letters, this is where you would do it right here. This is your kerning. So it gives you an option of default uh, uh, numbers, but you can certainly make it whatever number. We're going to go with 100 just to see what it does. And you can see it's pretty significant. Um, I don't think you want to get too far apart in your letters because it starts to look awkward. 
Um, but that, that is literally how you would affect your kerning and your lead. Um, and then also you have the ability to change the uh, scale. So if you want to have, for instance, if you want your, your, your uh, letters to be more squat, you could actually change um, that here, go to 50%. I said, okay, and you can see how it's instantly made, and this might work well better for your design. I'm not too sure if I know what your, your design is, but this is a way to do that. I'm, I'm going to go back to 100, and the same thing with over here, only this is makes your letters fatter if you want to do that. So those are just some real quick options that allow you to um, change your, your text as you choose to. And so that's that's your character box. I'm going to click off of this. And we're going to go back. I'm actually going to take our our, our uh, kerning back to zero. Um, another point uh, about spacing in between letters is this box here does it exponentially. So if you put in a, a 50 or 100, or 150, it's going to space these letters appropriately to to um, uh, the font itself. But let's just say you want. I, like, I don't like the spacing between the P and the H. I want it to be a little less. This dialog box will not allow you to do that typically. So the best way to do it is to just take your cursor arrow and click between the P and the H. And now you can see it's waiting for a, a command. Um, the best, I can hit your space bar and you'll get a huge gap. That's just one space per, per the font. Let's go back to that. If you want to, incrementally change the space in between this letter, these two letters, you're gonna hold your option key down on your keyboard and you're gonna use your arrow keys on your keyboard to incrementally one at a time as much as you want to or at the least amount that you want to. Just be careful that you don't have your letters touching. But this is, allows you to make those changes as you see fit. Because sometimes when you're typing, a default on a font may have more space between certain letters and not others. I'm actually gonna go down here and change. This E and the L is kind of bugging me. So I'm gonna open it up just a little bit. Um, so that's that's kind of how you would affect the basic components of your text uh, uh, before you, you, know, you go on to any other effects with it. Show us how you'd, uh, you mentioned last time we talked about uh, uh, given, given the, the types of motion, um, so we can add action to, to the front of the shirt kind of thing. Right, okay, so that is um, basically your text warp. Um, warp's a great tool if you're familiar with Illustrator. It has a lot of capabilities for vector ability, but it also has some in rasterization here in Photoshop. It's a little more limited than Illustrator, but let's go into that. So again, in order to affect anything in your type, typically you wanna have your type selected. And then when you, when you do that, go up to the top menu here and you'll see this little icon right here that is, it's called Create tech, Warped Text. So you click on that once, it's gonna give you a new dialog box. And this is called Warped Text. It's much, it's very much the same way as an Illustrator. Now it's saying none right now, of course, but it has a drop down menu. So go ahead and click on that drop down menu and you can see the options, uh, if you stay on it, you can see the options here of the things that you can do. Um, we're gonna just do an actual, um, uh, we'll, we'll do an arch, um, but what Lon mentioned about some of the, the action of, of text. So understand when you go to any, any of these selections or options here, it's gonna have a default immediately when you click on it. In this case, it's 50 plus, so it's pretty extreme. Um, I would never go that far. And this allows, just moving your lever here, and you can do it positive or you can do it negative. So if you wanna go down, you have that option. Um, the bend gets pretty crazy, so and notice too that in certain cases when you're using the options, sometimes the preview may disappear a little bit because it's just outside the scope of how the preview works in Photoshop. For something like this, it's pretty easy. But down here you have two more options, horizontal distortion and vertical distortion. Um, vertical, for those of you who are Star Wars fans, you might know the wall crawl on the opening of all the films. Basically, it has this sort of laid back look. Now, again, like I said, the preview is not showing because it's outside of its scope. We're just gonna hit okay. And you can see now it looks like the wall crawl on the opening of a Star Wars film. Um, you can get pretty extreme. Now, in order to get that dialogue box back to make this another option or change to it,
go back and click on your text warp tool again up here at the top, and it just comes back, and it even keeps the parameters that you had the last time you did it. Uh, you can go pretty extreme, and again, your preview's not gonna show it. Once you say okay, that's that's pretty crazy. It might be hard to read. You have to be careful when you're warping text that you know, it doesn't become um, uh, you know, non-readable, and then you, you kind of lose the effect. You notice we picked a uh, really uh, bold type, uh, A, uh, something in bold is gonna jump off the shirt better than something thin, but also as we move into some of these other lessons, it's gonna give us more to bite on. We have uh, a lot more fill space and yes. those types of things. One other exercise I thought maybe Corey would share with us uh, quickly is, how would we maybe outline this uh, quick and easy? Um, if you wanted to stroke it using the edit tool, and you'll notice that fill and stroke are grayed out here. Um, because it, it's still in, in, in text mode and not, and not a, an object at this, at this point. So, but uh, anytime you want to do a layer effect, whether it's, whether it's graphic elephants, you know, a, a font or it's an object, um, down there, there's layer effects in two spots that you can grab it. You can go up here to your menu under layer and you will see a thing called layer style. And here you will see all the layer options for manipulation right here. And there's a lot, even though that's a short list, there's a lot you can do with all these different options. The other way to do that is at the very bottom of your, um, of your, of your uh, layer uh, uh, dialog box is you'll see FX here. And if you click on that, it's there's the same list without all the other things. The minute you um, roll over any of these and let go, and we're gonna do stroke, because Long talked about doing a stroke. So let's just go ahead and drop off on stroke. And again, like, like we talked about with the warp, it's gonna default immediately. In this case, it's 34 pixels, so it's pretty wide. Um, but you can change that number, much like an illustrator when you change points. But this is based off of pixels, not points, because you can't do a half a pixel or a pixel and a half with points you can get very incremental, but not in Photoshop. So you're kind of limited a little bit there. Um, but there's no, you know, strokes are pretty basic. So you can, you can move that lever up and get a huge stroke, or you can move that lever down and get a small one. And notice too, it always gives you a little preview here about what, what your object on that layer is doing. Doesn't matter what the object is here, it's gonna kind of show you. And you'll notice that when we do, um, when we go into, uh, uh, bevel and emboss, it will show you a preview here as well. So that's a basic quick way to, uh, to add a stroke. If you want to deal with opacities, um, just be careful though, in, in screen printing, when we change our opacities, we're going to instantly uh, employ halftones. So um, if you want a 25% halftone dot around your text, this would be the way to do that. Um, I, we typically don't do that, so we're just going to keep it at 100%, but that's a quick way to add a stroke and then just hit okay and then you've got it um notice here too real quick in your layers palette it's showing that you've done this now so it it, it, it's, it says hey look i understand you put an effect here if for any reason you don't want to see it you see these little eyeballs here just click one and turn it off and all of a sudden if you that way you can see what it was originally click it back on and then as you do effects because you can do more than one layer effect to to one layer and all of a sudden you'll see if you do a bevel and a boss or a drop shadow, you will see all of those appear here below and then you can turn those on and off as you choose to as well. Outstanding. Well, definitely stay tuned for more lessons. We'll be going into some of those uh, layer effects in Photoshop as well as some halftone work and separations and under bases and such. But for now, he's Corey and I'm Lon and we're Graphic Elephants. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.